Hot Wheels Crash is a fantastic game. I'm glad I decided to check it out. There's a ton of Hot Wheels games, and for some reason I chose this one to be the first one I ever cover. It just seemed weird and appealing, and honestly, it's both of those things. It released in 1999, it was developed by Prolific, and of course it was published by Mattel. It's a simple game that can also be incredibly difficult. You have to position your Hot Wheels and aim it and decide how fast you go and land in a specific way to get that high score way up there. Most of the difficulty levels, they're right here, 1, 2, and 3, require you to get a score of 100 or higher for it to be completed. Complete all the levels within a difficulty and you get an extra one, which is usually much more difficult than the others. Do all the extra stunts and you unlock the last four. To be honest, I didn't get to the very last final stage because the game crashed on the one right before it, which just so happened to be the hardest. I literally spent 30 minutes on this stunt and when I thought I beat it, the game crashed. Uh, <laughs> So I didn't see the true final level till I looked up a, a playthrough on YouTube. The game is incredibly short, and I think that's kind of to be expected. I don't think they had a massive budget for this, and there's a lot going on within these levels that I imagine that development was pretty strenuous. Sure, there were some pretty good looking games in 1999, but I don't think Mattel's video game branch was necessarily well funded. I think the graphics are fine, and since a lot of people are into that PS1 texture warping, you'll get a lot of that here. <laughs> but yes, this is all you do. Pull off stunts for whatever movie is being filmed. There's really no lore set up. I don't really know what the movie is you're filming for, but whatever it is, I would love to see it. And the stunts are just absolutely ridiculous. When you pull them off, there's just like dominoes. It's almost like a Rude Goldberg machine. All this crazy stuff has to happen for it to be a successful stunt. Once you know how to do a stunt, you could probably beat this game relatively quickly. I mean, I didn't know what I was doing, and my footage is only a little over an hour. That's probably the really disappointing aspect of it, is that there isn't really a strive for a high score. I mean, I'm sure you can get a better score than what I've gotten, but a lot of these stunts have to be pulled off a certain way to even remotely reach that high score that is required to unlock the special levels. I don't think you could really get around the game and see who can score the highest. I mean, maybe, but again, certain things have to happen. Like in the opening of this video, you have to land in that funhouse for things to blow up for the ferris wheel to come unhinged and all this to happen another example is there's one stunt where you gotta find some way to hit this stealth bomber so a missile will drop and roll and hit this tower and fall in the hangar like <laughs> what and some of these levels require a little bit of timing but once you figure out what you're aiming for you can almost do it 100 percent of the time and that's where hot wheels crash is more like a puzzle game more so than like a crash for fun kind of game. Like when I first played this, I thought of the crash mode in the old Burnout games. And of course, there's that Stuntman game on PS2. But no, this plays nothing like those. You don't drive the car yourself. You just kind of propel it forward. And there's not much in the way of options either. You can't change resolution or graphic settings. You can change how your car is propelled, but it has no effect on gameplay. It's mostly just for appearance. You'll see some repeated levels with different setups, but yeah, I ain't gonna complain about that. There's a lot going on in these levels, and I'm sure they had to reuse some assets to make it a little bit easier to develop. I highly recommend anyone check out this game and try to beat it yourself. It's It, it can be challenging, but also it's quick. It won't take much time out of your day just to check out and... Maybe you will get to see that ending. I'm telling you, you need to see the last level for yourself. I mean, if you plan on not playing this, sure. Go look up a, a playthrough. There, there's, there's several on YouTube. But I think it'd be much more satisfying if you saw it for yourself. I wish I saw it for myself, but my game had to crash. If you're curious, I was playing this using the actual physical CD. And I was playing it in XP. And that was the only crash that I experienced. But that last level was so difficult. I didn't feel like trying it again. Like, if I actually got the score I needed, I, I would be upset knowing that the game decided to crash. It's a simple game, but an effective one, and really, really fun. It makes me want to see the other Hot Wheels games, though I know that this doesn't necessarily mean that they're all going to be great, but I wouldn't mind exploring them further.
there's one more episode of late 90s PC gaming coming up. And then after that, I'm going to take a break and look at a different year in gaming history. But I'll be back. There's plenty more things that I want to see that came out in the late 90s. But I just need a brief change of pace. And honestly, a bunch of games had come in, and there's a few that I want to check out. But still, do not hesitate to let me know what games you'd like to see covered in the series, and I'll put them on the list for when I return to this amazing golden age of PC gaming. Remember, we have a Discord. Join it. Come by, discuss old games, or talk about whatever. Link in the description below. On top of Discord, there's links to our other pages, to the OST that I'm using, and of course, our Patreon. Anyway, as always, I will see you in the next episode of whatever that may be. I'm still bad at ending videos, so here, have a fantastic crash.